welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So, <clears throat> sourdough series. Y'all, I was not going to do this on camera and if it doesn't turn out, you'll never see it. I have so much wonderful pour off from my sourdough starter day eight this morning that I'm like, I want to try sourdough crackers. So we're gonna try it together. I want to share, and I'll drop the link, that I got this from alexandracooks.com and they're called sourdough discard crackers. So this is a, um, well, you could do it by weight. You know what, I see it's got the cup measurements. Let's just do it by cups. <clears throat> so I think this is gonna be super good and super simple. So what do you need? You need salt, butter, all-purpose flour and <clears throat> rye flour in your discard. Now, she does say that you can use whatever combination of flour that you like. So if you're using whole wheat for your starter, totally use whole wheat. So step one, I am going to put uh, a cup of the discard into our bowl. So. I'm going to set the cup. Let me tip y'all down a little bit. There we go. And set the cup in the bowl. Because <laughs> I know myself. Come on, Winston, get in the cup. And I don't think it really matters so much whether you measure it liquid or solid. I'm doing it as a solid. I, I just think that makes more logical sense. <clears throat> Again, we have... I don't understand. <laughs> I think that makes more logical sense again. We have. Y'all, I have no idea, except that my Apple Watch is super nosy, and it talks to me all the time, and it just says nonsensical things, so, mm. Oh, boy. Okay. So, I am going to use a, a um, measuring cup that you would for a solid. So, I've got a nice full cup. So let's go ahead and scrape that out into the bowl. And the reason I decided to go ahead and use my discard for something besides like a pancake or a waffle is because today uh, the sourdough starter has changed. It's much looser and it has a more uh, fermented or sourdough smell. Okay, this is super sticky guys, excuse my reach. So. Next, flowers. So we need a half a cup of all-purpose and a half a cup of rye. What did I do in my half cup, y'all? Oh, is it gonna be one of those days? Like a third of a cup, two thirds of a cup? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let me find my cup. The half cup was right there. Were you all screaming, it's right there, Kim? <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all. Some days, all right, so. Up. Let's get back to being serious. Half a cup of all-purpose flour. And we're going to do half a cup of rye flour. And y'all, I'm working on some kitchen organization projects. Not that I'm filming them just personally because I need to like clean everything out. So if you see a lot of junk sitting around, yeah, I'm cleaning. <laughs> Stop to make crackers. All right. So we have our flowers. The next thing we're gonna add is our teaspoon of, it says kosher salt. I am going to use pink Himalayan. It says if you're salt sensitive, use half a teaspoon. I'm gonna use about half a teaspoon. Um, I'm not particularly salt sensitive, but I wanna top it with some everything bagel seasoning that I made so it does have a little bit of salt in it. All right, next is four tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature. Y'all, I'm gonna, that's half a stick. If you buy, you know, store butter. I'm just gonna estimate it. <laughs> and you know, I'm using my dough hook. Let's go ahead and mix this in a little bit before we add this butter, which may make it a little bit harder. All right, so 
I'm just putting in my chunks of butter. And, you know, you could use a pastry cutter to kind of cut it in. I will tell you it, the link to her website. She's got a lot of sourdough stuff. I am going to be utilizing some of her recipes because why not? <laughs> and I want to give her full credit, y'all. And y'all, if I ever do anything that is like somebody else's content, I don't give them credit. Um, believe me, it's totally by accident. I always try to be very sensitive to that. You know, there's a lot of similar content on YouTube. What I want to say about that is, um, especially in the homesteading community, we do a lot of similar things. We may do them a little differently, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're copying off each other. All right. I think this would be better with a pastry cutter. So I'm going to switch here from my dough hook to a pastry cutter because I need to dirty all the dishes this morning. But you do want to cut that butter in. You don't want it to be as chunky as what mine is here. So mine is not like, usually if you're um, mixing in butter, you want it to be like, you know, at least pebble size. You don't want it great big chunks, and I've got great big chunks. The other thing you could do, and I may do, is use your hands if you're really having trouble. It's kind of cold in my house this morning, so my butter, even though it sets at room temperature, might be a little stiff. So what we're trying to do is bring this together in a bowl. And her website, I, I don't know if I finished this thought, has a lot of pictures. So I thought it was super helpful. Okay, this is starting to come together now. You just gotta put you, put you back into it. <laughs> so are you all getting some warm weather? I was so excited because we're supposed to be 60 degrees tomorrow, but there's 90% chance of rain. So kind of giving up hopes on being outdoors. So I'm gonna use my hands to kind of bring this together in a ball. I'm gonna, you know, fling a little here and there. <laughs> you almost think I'm the messiest cook. And I'm really not. It just seems like it happens whenever I try to film. Okay, get in there. So I'm gonna show you here in just a minute what mine looks like after I kind of bring it together a little better. All right, that looks pretty good. So this is what we've got. So we've got some chunks of butter you can see, but the flowers are all well incorporated. And what we're going to do is, we're gonna cut this in half and we're gonna form it into rectangular shapes, <laughs> rectangular shapes wrap it in plastic wrap and stick it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes till it gets nice and chilled. Then I will bring you back after I've cleaned up this whole mess and we're gonna roll it out and we're gonna top it with my homemade everything bagel seasoning. We're gonna bake them up and give them a taste test. I've shared prior, I have an upcoming, pardon me, got the hiccups now. Oh, really Kim? I have an upcoming soap making class and I want to be able to offer some refreshments. So I thought how perfect to make sourdough discard crackers because I am using organic flowers and this particular group of people are very like-minded and like their organic foods. So that's why I wanted to give it a try. All right, let me wash up my hands. I'll bring you back to show you the two rectangles wrapped ready for the fridge and then we'll let them hang out for 30 minutes. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the butter chunks incorporated in. And I also didn't mention, but wanted to tell you, she says you can do this up to 24 hours in advance. So if I want to have fresh baked crackers for my event, I can certainly do that. Got a little bit tighter. And just bake them off the next day. So that is a really cool aspect. I like things that can be done ahead 
because when I have guests, I love feeding people and I like feeding them things that are homemade and, and maybe a little bit special. <laughs> so sometimes I get in a little bit over my head with too much to do on the day of the event. So, all right. Those aren't perfectly rectangular, but it's fine. So here's what we have into the fridge, 30 minutes, I'll see. Okay. <laughs> Y'all ever have one of those days where you're uploading a video and it doesn't process and it's, it abandons the processing and you have to start over? Then you hear a big crash because your shelf, which you might have overloaded in your cabinet fell. So I've got all that done. So needless to say, our dough is well chilled. <laughs> So what you want to do, y'all, let me scoot you down here, is get your oven preheating to 350. You want to take these out one at a time because you want to keep them cold. And again, I'm not an expert. I'm just following her directions, which were excellent. So we are going to roll it into a rectangle. So what the directions say is put down a piece of parchment paper, flour it. Doesn't matter what kind of flour. I did use the raw because I want it to taste raw. Then it says to put the wax paper over it, or the wax paper, the plastic wrap over it, and begin to roll. So I'm gonna use my Grandma Victoria's rolling pin for some luck, <laughs> because I haven't had too much luck today. The idea here is you wanna get it super, super thin. So if you don't roll it thin, she does say your crackers will not be crispy. And of course we want crispy crackers. It also doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. Y'all, um, I can tell you this stuff. <laughs> it's very stiff, of course, because it's cold. This is always the point in a video I'm like, hmm, Maybe I shouldn't have videoed this one. <laughs> so it is going to require pressure. That much I can tell you. Mm. I can see those lovely chunks of butter, though. Butter good. <laughs> and I'm going to say she probably rolled it to like an eighth of an inch. That's how thin hers was. I do have a really nice rolling pin. You, it's just like a cylinder and you put the guides on the ends of it so that you can actually be super precise in your dough thickness. And we might switch to that one, but I'm gonna try at least as best I can to get this rolled out without that. All right, so you guys don't have to Watch me on this struggle bus. I'm gonna keep rolling. I will bring you back and show you how thin I was able to get it, about the size that it ends up being, how we're going to prepare it for the oven before baking. All right, y'all. I was able to get mine pretty thin, as you can see here. And you want to lift your whole parchment baking sheet, on, or baking paper, onto your baking sheet. Um, I had a lot of trouble with my parchment wanting to wrinkle, so I've kind of like thought, should I like get a new piece of parchment, but I think it'll be all right. Now, you have some options for um, how you want to top it, but it does say brush with olive oil. So what I'm going to do is use my home infused rosemary olive oil. Might be easier just to dump some on there. It's not a very porous dough. It is a highly sticky dough. That's why I think it says, you know, to roll it out between the parchment. I didn't have any problem with stickage because I did use the saran wrap. And if y'all are wondering, if you kind of get a glimpse here and there in the background, <laughs> why is your house such a mess, Kim? Y'all, I am working on some major spring cleaning and organization projects here. Not that I'm filming them all. Um... I know it's early, it's only February to begin spring cleaning, but let me just say this. There's nothing like having a group of people you've never met in your home to make you like scrub everything. <laughs> All right, so I am going to 
use my home mixed everything bagel seasoning. Not that it's homemade. Well, I guess it's homemade. And I do have a video on mixes that I like to do. So if you want to watch that. And I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle this on. And you can do it as generously or as sparsely as you want. What I'm actually going to do versus rolling out the second one right away, I'm going to go ahead and bake these and see what I think. Yes, I'll use a little bit more electricity. Because um, I'm baking twice instead of once, but I think it's well worth it. So going back to the directions, um, cut the dough as you wish. I like to do long strips about a inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide. I use, she uses a bench scraper, but a pizza wheel works well too. So I'm gonna go with a bench cutter and make strips. I think these are gonna be really good. The other thing, it does say bake. Time to be a lefty, y'all. Some things is just easier with my other hand, you know. Bake 20 to 25 minutes. Do not underbake. Um, you want to rotate the pan halfway through. And it says check it at the 20 minute mark, but depending on how thinly you were able to roll. Um, you know, the thicker they are, of course, the longer they're going to take. So this is pretty easy. And I am going to cut, of course, some of these longer strips crossways. And y'all, because of the configuration of my kitchen and the kitchen being small, I know sometimes you're looking at my elbow. I apologize for that. Gosh, y'all, this is awful thin, but maybe that'll be perfect. Guess what I'm having for breakfast this <laughs> morning? Um, so I try to switch hands, but the other camera angle is it's, it's not good. It's not a happy camera angle. So I'm just going to cut this in half down the middle, middle, you know, I'm kind of scoring it, but I am trying to cut all the way through. I think that looks good y'all. So here we go into the oven. I'll bring you back when they're done. Yeah, I'm while my crackers are cooking, I thought I would bring you out here, my girly girls. It is so densely foggy this morning. So <laughs> this is what I hear every morning. What's the matter, girly girls? Is you missing your mommy? Aw. Ooh. It's dark. You ready to come out? Here's what our beautiful sourdough pour-off crackers look like. And I... I only cooked mine 20 minutes. Now, let me tell you, I had the double oven option. I had it in the small oven and it has a convect feature. So mine may have gone a little quicker than yours will. So let's, this is what they look like. It's gonna be hot. Mmm. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the crunch. But these are absolutely delicious. Salt level, level for me could be a little bit higher, so I think I'll sprinkle a little salt. Mmm. Mm hmm. But very, very good. So drop me a comment below as I talk with my mouth full. What are you all making with your pour off? Highly recommend the crackers. Very, very tasty. Super simple other than rolling it out. But y'all, if you notice, I'm very short and my counters are like above my waist. So I think if I stood on a stool, I could probably get more press power to roll it out. All right, I will see you all again very soon. This is an extra video. But in the meantime, be healthy, be well, be blessed, take care.